All right, today we're going to be talking about the liquidity trap. So, Lewin, Prasanna, listen up back there. So, September 14th, 2008, the Lehman Brothers fails. Well, what happens to the Lehman Brothers failing is, let's say you have John here and Lewin, Prasanna. They all have a decent amount of cash. Well, since Lehman Brothers has failed, they're scared and they're worried. They don't want to spend their money anymore. So they're going to take their money and they're going to put it into savings in a bank. They're going to take their money and they're going to put it into the bank. So then, Fred from the Fed comes along. And he decides that he's going to give more money to the banks. He's going to increase the money supply. Because here's what he's hoping. He's hoping that an increase in the money supply is going to lead banks to lower their interest rate. He's hoping with lower interest rates, it's going to attract more people to invest. So there's going to be an increase in investments. And he's hoping with an increase in investments, there will also be an increase in consumption. And finally, the Fed is hoping that with an increase in both investments and consumption, there will be an increase in GDP, which we all know is very good for the economy. But what really is happening is, Interest rates are getting so low, they're getting to something called the zero lower bound, which is between zero and one fourth percent. Well, what's happening is they're getting so low, they can't get any lower anymore. So now you have this channel cut off, and there's a hole. Well, since interest rates can't get any lower, people aren't going to invest anymore. So you set another hole right here. And we have too much money in the system, and no one's spending. So we have our liquidity trap, which we are in today. Yes, we are. Back to you, Rick Eckhorn.